Hello. So I wanted to, uh, in addition to the CATIA demonstration, I wanted to give you uh, a little more formal definition of curve and surface continuity. So, as I mentioned before, G0 uh, continuity, or, or when you have splines, is when you have a co-point uh, situation. If it's surface, you've got a co-edge uh, condition. G nothing or G not is no continuity. So G0 is when you have point continuity. G1 is when you have tangent continuity. So you can see here on the G0 continuity, you're sharing a co-point condition, but the slopes are different. When you've got a G1 uh, continuity or tangent continuity, you have a co-point uh, condition or G0 condition, plus you also have the slope of uh, the curves are the same at that point. The slopes are the same at that point. G2 continuity, uh, you have curvature continuity, you have uh, a G0 continuity, which they share a co-edge condition. Uh, the curves are tangent at that point, and they also have the same rate of curvature at that point. And then finally, G3 continuity, they have a G0 continuity, they share a point, they have tangent continuity, the curves are tangent at that particular point, they have the same rate of curvature at that particular point, and G3 also adds uh, uh, the acceleration component at that particular point. So G nothing continuity means uh, they don't come together at all. Uh, so let's look at this from a mathematical perspective. So G0 means they're disjointed. So if you look at the, the mathematical function, so let's say that one curve has is f of x, the other curve is g of x, uh, they are not equal to each other uh, with any particular point. So uh, the functions are not equal with each other. So if you, if you, if at x, I should say, so f of x and g of x are not equal to each other. So if you think about a graph with these your functions, right? So they have to pass a vertical line test. But so at a particular x, which is going to be the end of one curve and the beginning of another curve, uh, they are not equal to each other on the y value. So that's what's happening here. For position continuity, f of x is the same as g of x. So the, the end of, if you want to think of this graphically, so this is the f of x, this is g of x. Uh, the beginning and ending of the curves. Um, the beginning and ending of the curves are, uh, if you look at the far continuity type, for that particular x value, they're, they're equal to each other. They have the same y output. So that's G0 continuity. So tangency continuity is, is G1. They have G0 plus, uh, they have the same slope. So if you think of the slope of a curve, the slope of an equation is defined by the first derivative. So at x, their first derivatives have the same slope. So that's why you see in the math analysis column, uh, y prime of x is equal to g prime of x. Their derivatives, derivatives are equal to each other at that particular point. So that's g1 continuity. g2 continuity, curvature continuity. So they have the same radius at that point or the same curvature, if you will, at that particular point. So it's G0 and G1 plus, they have the same radius at that point, so or the same curvature. So that's gonna be the second derivative. So at X, the second derivative of X is, um, of F of X, is gonna be equal to the second derivative of G of X at that point. That makes for really, really good reflection. This is primarily going to be the minimum requirements for good reflections. And um, as it says here, the reflections will change smoothly. Will change smoothly. Uh, and it can go up to G3 or G4. Just, it just increases uh, the derivative values. CAD systems, uh, the GSD workbench and CATIA uh, will primarily only go up to uh, G2. Other workbenches will go G3, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were GAT systems out there that would go up to above G3, but uh, I think you're losing some practical application and ability to even create objects that have that um, uh, 
real world reflection quality. So uh, looking at it graphically, this is what G0 would look like. Notice the sharp edge. If you've had me in class before, I would call this a G0 edge. You've heard me say that before in other classes. So that's a G0 edge. This is a G1 edge. You actually have two of them here. You have a G1 edge here, a tangent edge, and you have a G1 edge up here. So you've got a nice blend between these two surfaces. So you've got three really surfaces here. You've got a top, bottom, and a blend between the two with G1 across. Um, G2 is curvature continuity. Uh, so you again, three surfaces, bottom, top, and then the blend between them uh, with G2 provides a much better uh, reflections than G1 and G1. You're going to get blurred reflections, but at least you can see the blur. Here, the blur will just be chopped in half. So, And then finally, the last one is G3. Sometimes you will hear this G3 is also listed as curvature, but I call it acceleration continuity. Uh, much, much better reflections. You won't even get this inside of the GST Workbench of Katia. Uh, some more reflections with a what I call a zebra stripe analysis. I know the quality here is, is not great, uh, but you got original shape. You got G zero across here. Notice how the port, how the zebra stripes are not lining up with each other. And I'll show you how to do this in Katia one day to do the zebra stripe analysis. When you have G one, the the lines of the zebra stripe are lining up, but that's it. But that's G one or, or uh, tangent continuity and G, G2 you get smoother blend and reflections. I'll show you how to do some of this in Katia later. Uh, again more examples this actually comes from if I'm not mistaken a alias a video but it, again uh, zebra stripe analysis you got a G0 corner here so the zebra stripes are not lining up with each other. See what's happening up here. The zebra stripes are not lining up with each other. Uh, G1, tangent continuity. So the zebra stripes are lining up with each other, but they have a G0 look to them when they do hit each other. Same way down here. And then finally with G2, the zebra stripes are lining up with each other and they're smoothly blending in together. So you're getting better reflections here under this G2 continuity. But more graphical analysis with porcupine analysis. Um, it's got G0 position. I've showed this to you before, but the slopes, you get, the, the slopes are different, but you do have the shared point, but the slopes are different. So that's a G0 corner. G1 corner, um, you got shared points and the slopes are the same. So if you look at this hull of the curve, the hull represents the slope and they are the same across here. But the rate of curvature is different. So you got a rate of curvature here, and then it jumps to a rate of curvature here. So you've got a smooth rate of curvature, and then boom, it jumps up and has another rate of curvature. That will create a poor reflection. Down here, you got G0 plus tangent plus the rate of curvature is the same. So notice how the, they're lining up here. That presents a much better reflection. And then finally, G3, uh, the change in the rate of curvature is the same as it goes across. So these two tops of my porcupine analysis would be equal with each other here, or be actually tangent to each other, presenting a great reflection. The GST workbench in won't go this high up, but some other workbenches will. So you might you still need to know the G2 curvature. I call this acceleration. Where I got this slide still calls it curvature, but you can think of G3, even though it says curvature, think of that as acceleration. Again, just another example here. I can't, I can't highlight this enough. So G0, the slopes are different. G1, the slopes are the same, but the rate of curvature is different. And then G2, copoint, the slopes are the same, and the rate of curvature is the same across there. And the more example I mentioned here, I've got a point of inflection. The minimum degree a curve can have and have a point of inflection is a third degree. So notice I've got one, two, three, four points without any tangency controls at any of these control vertices. That's a third degree curve. It has the potential to give me a point of inflection. 
Uh, if I move this point down in here, you would probably lose that point of inflection, but it would still be a third degree curve. Your designs, designs will have points of inflection, but you got to control them carefully. You can really look at a porcupine analysis and tell how the quality of your curve by the smoothness of the porcupine analysis. Notice this is just like the same curvature all the way through. This isn't bad. I mean, it starts off with minimum curvature and then it increases, but it increases smoothly as it goes around. Same way here. Smooth, it does have a point of inflection and maybe you want that in your design, but at least it's a smooth transition. And then finally down here, this is, this is probably a poor example of smoothness. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six points. So that's a fifth degree curve. I could probably create the same curve with a third degree and it'd be much better. So it's kind of a rule for this class. Keep your degrees of your curve, or if you want to look at it this way, the number of points on your curve at a very, very minimum number to get your shape. So notice how I've got a, this smooth, this curve is coming around and it boom, shoots across, does a point of inflection real up quick, and then it stops and comes out smooth. That's this, this is a poor curve. Uh, and it comes up, goes across, a nice smooth, but then it shoots up again, and it comes back around. So you're looking at, a, even though you can look at the curve and say, well, the curve doesn't look bad, but when you throw a porcupine analysis on it, it really, really, really starts looking bad. So this is going to be an emphasis for this class on getting this correct. Um, last slide. Uh, just some terms, class A surface, it's an automobile term. Surfaces can be seen by the user, whether inside or outside, while the product is in use. Typically it's G2 or better, but that's based on company standards. G2 or better continuity. A class B surface, so my definition here for class A is primarily this middle one here. It's gonna be surfaces that can be seen by the user, inside or out. Think of a car automobile when you're on the inside while it's in use. So we can apply that same definition to a product such as a power tool or a hair dryer or something of that nature. Typically, I will say G2 or better, but sometimes you might hear me say with your surface, in this class, by the way, surfaces are always G1 or better. So just assume, unless I say otherwise, a surface is gonna be G1 or better. But you may hear me say, hey, I want it, all surfaces G2 or better. But minimum is G1 or better. Class B surface, surfaces that can be seen by the user uh, while not in use. So if you add that, um, an example, if you open the door of your car, you've got the product, you can see a surface such as the end of the door, um, inside of the door, some parts of the door surface that you can see. Um, of course, before you operate your car, you want to shut your door. So. Um, some of those surfaces you can see while the door is open, but you can't see them while the door is shut would be a class B surface. And then finally, body and white surfaces that cannot be seen by the user unless you want to you know, get some tools out and take some surfaces apart. And th those can be G0 or better continuity. So sometimes we refer to as body and white. It's essentially the, the if this is an automobile, then it's a surface that you would see before you started assembling the body panels, if, if you will, or the dashboard parts of it. I mean, still may be surfaces, but they're not. You're not concerned with aesthetics. You're not concerned with reflections at all. You're not really even concerned with reflections with Class B. Uh, reflections are not important with B. They're certainly not important with body and white. Reflections do get important based on the product when you get into Class A.